and uh, there is advantages and there are disadvantages in stem cells. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is that they can actually be used to repair several disorders and also in regenerative medicine and anti-aging medicine. The bad is immunorejection. The immune system will not accept it. The immune system will say, this is not mine, I don't want it. And the ugly is when you have teratomas as a result of the stem cells, cancers. So we have to weigh the pros and the cons here. Now, the most kind of safest stem cells, the mesenchyma stem cells, they are more available They're because you get from uh, the uh, adipose tissue and uh, you can get them from uh, um, uh, amniotic acid, or from many different sites, basically, you can get them. The uh, mesenchyma stem cells have been used extensively to uh, treat several disorders like uh, diabetic, uh, um, diabetic disorders, cardiovascular disorders, uh, brain tumors. I have collected about 45 articles to kind of express this lecture. And uh, some of the uh, references are given here. Uh, if you need them, you can get in touch with me. I can give you all the references. The difficulty with mesenchyma stem cells is uh, uh, the heterogeneity. And also, who is injecting it? Because the passage and the culture are also uh, affecting the phenotype of the cell. And the most important problem is the senescence. Because when you have the senescence, then you don't have differentiation. And this is the, this is the trick. As we're aging, we have more cells. We proliferate more, but the differentiation goes down. So basically, differentiation and proliferation is like a seesaw. When the differentiation is up, proliferation is down. When proliferation is up, then differentiation is down. When proliferation is up, you got tumors. So this is a problem uh, with uh, senescence with the uh, mesenchyma stem cells that there is a decreased differentiation potential. And then you can start getting the problem. So differentiation is when a cell becomes an eye or a liver or a kidney or you know whatever you have it, it has to go whatever it has to fix basically or skin. Now uh, again, arrest the differentiation, you're gonna get more proliferation, and that is a big problem for us. Now dif this is very important. This is a very important slide. Differentiation depends on the ratio between mitochondrial differentiation and nuclear differentiation. The mitochondrial increases the activity, the nuclear decreases the activity. Now, the problem, the inherent problem with, with uh, embryonic stem cells is that this ratio is very low. That's why they have a higher potential to create the teratomas. And that's why all the ethical issues and the safety issues come in. And this is just a slide to show you how the normal or continued proliferation proceed. You can see the first one is the uh, normal, the second one is, uh, and how a cancer cell keeps uh, basically proliferating because it doesn't have to differentiate. So it says only one step. Uh, normally, a, a stem cell to be functional is two step proliferation, differentiation. Um, this cancer is just keeps growing, and it, uh, it, it's, a, it's a problem uh, because it only begins one step. Now, there have been many, many protocols about embryonic stem cells. These are the cells that you can get from the embryo. Uh, we use uh, human embryos. There is a lot of ethical considerations there. And then you use also animals, uh, like sheep and other animals. Uh, nevertheless, it's still quite controversial because of this ethics and others. And this is a, a study that showed how, uh, as soon as they injected the brain stem cells, there were teratomas that started being created. And the fourth slide is you see the teratoma in, uh, in kind of from the long distance. Now, <laughs> we can we can 
suppress the immune system, okay? So we can deal with the immunosuppression problem. Uh, we can basically, uh, so the immune system can accept, the body can accept the stem cells. But then, because we have debilitated the immune system, we have warmed the bubble, but we can lose the war because we can have neurogenesis after that. So then we have two problems. And there, there is a boy on cue from uh, the Chinese Beijing Academy of Science. He stated, he said that he could find, uh, he could create liver stem cells mature and uh, basically have two immunosuppressive proteins, but if there was a tumor, then the, uh, the immune system could attack the tumor cells but not the normal cells. So the normal cells would be invisible. But this research has not been replicated. So it sounds ideal, but it needs a lot more research before we start kind of getting excited about it. So immunorejection is a main problem. And actually, if you transplant a heart or a kidney, you're probably gonna have a higher acceptance from the immune system than if you transplant um, uh, embryonic stem cells. So the Nobel Prize 2012 was given uh, for uh, the, this process of uh, basically um, reprogramming the, uh, the cells. So the immune system will accept them. And there is four proteins, the OCD, three quarters, and, uh, and the SOX2, and many other proteins that I don't wanna get you confused with that. But that's all the research of the Nobel Prize 2012. It has to do with reprogramming. And that's a way of, again, getting the immune system to accept the stem cells that we are injecting. But again, we might win the battle and lose the war. Because basically, even the uh, um, pluripotent stem cells, which is the stems that we're reprogramming, can also create teratomas eventually if there is a problem with uh, nuclear proteins or nuclear mutations, and then there is, a, and this is now another slide that shows you how the teratoma formation happens. So the clinics are telling you only the good, and I'm here to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. <coughs> Now, exosomes. Exosomes are wonderful discovery. Um, they basically they are signals. They're signaling. Okay, there are sacs on the top of the cells, and you can you can think of them like FedEx or or DHL, kind of carrying messages from one cell to another. They're signaling, and they have microRNAs. They're wonderful little uh, kind of communicators. And they can also be used like, like a vaccine because you can have like the cancer exosomes and then they are, uh, the virus gonna create antibodies and uh, kind of help. Mm -hmm. The Nobel Prize 2018 had to do with how basically you can uh, put brakes on uh, the uh, PD-1 and the, the, uh, the T cells that basically enhance death, cellular death. So this is the protein that enhances the programmed cell death protein, the PD-1. You can basically um, stop it. You can put a break on it. Because what happens is the cancer somehow increases it. It basically, you have more increased cell death. So because everything dies around it, then the cancer can proceed. And exosomes have been um, utilized in many different fashions and they have been very successfully used uh, for many, many different disorders, including <laughs> depression and epilepsy, I mean, things that you wouldn't expect that would be kind of uh, uh, repaired as a result of stem cell, of exosomes. The problem is the preparation. So you see, there, there are many different ways of isolation methods of exosomes. So here's gonna be all the competition between different companies selling them. Because for example, the outer certification process, the uh, UC, it has 50% purity and they can be damaged. Other methods, again, 50%. The uh, polymer prescription, the PP, has 50%. 
the immunocapture has about 99% clarity. That's great, but it loses its functionality. So again, you get one, but you lose on the other. And this is where I thought, okay, for people that need stem cells because they're ill, okay, we have to do it. But what, because there are a lot of dangers with it. But what about, do we, can we enhance our own stem cells, our kind of <coughs> endogenous stem cells? And the answer is yes. Actually, any type of exercise can enhance your stem cells. And this is three articles that I wrote recently. I have written about 39 articles now. They have been recently published and previously a lot more. And what we did, we looked at uh, ALP, AAT, a a a AST, um, a albumin and um, ALT. And we looked at all this and basically they all decreased or increased in the optimal direction. So we got higher albumin, lower ALT, <coughs> lower AST and lower ALT. And also we looked at bilirubin and creatinine again they reduced uh, in the optimal direction. So basically we have our own stem cells that can repair different organs like the liver, like fatty liver. That you have fatty liver, I mean, you look, you're healthy, but still there is something that gets there and could make you unhealthy at some point. And we looked at uh, triglycerides and LDL, and again, they kind of decreased in the optimal direction. BMI, BMR increased, that's a good thing, uh, because that's the lesson that about brain, how many calories you spend at rest. And then we looked what happens after seven months. And still, with the, you know, the stem cells that, the, because what happens as the adipose tissue goes inside, it is released into the, uh, into the blood flow to go into the mitochondria to burn and become energy, it also releases stem cells. And those stem cells, through your own brain, are directed to the sites of function. And you see, almost done. Um, we see uh, the ASD 100% after seven months, bilirubin, same thing. We saw that the ALT was in optimal range. If it was low, it got up. It was high, it went down. The GGT, same thing, optimal range. And so basically, there are methods through health enhancement to kind of increase our own stem cells, our own differentiation. So that's something that I wanted to deliver. Like for healthy people, that's something that you can also recommend as an alternative. And this is the uh, conclusion of my lecture. If you need to reach me, science at I will answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.